The Australian Grand Prix held in the Albert Park circuit is arguably one of the best and worst tracks to ever exist in Formula One history. Best as in amazing for the crowd, but absolutely horrendous for the drivers. Where if we take a look at last year's race, it actually looked like a clip from the least toxic F123 lobby. <laughs> Last year in Australia, we had tragedy after tragedy and so many explosive moments on track that my grandpa watching it with me thought that he was in Vietnam all over again. The race had three red flags, making it F1's most stopped race of all time, and I'd also say that that race was the day of reckoning as we had the Spanish Civil War, the French Civil War, FIA Civil War, and of course, the tire revolution. Uh, bono, I mean, good my tires are gone. Now this is why I call the 2023 Australian Grand Prix the Historical Reenactment Group, where monkey-brained individuals can learn more about history through Formula One. However, I'm not here to talk about last year's Australian Grand Prix. What I'm actually here to talk about in this video is the 2024 Australian Grand Prix, ladies and gentlemen. That is right, guys, the craziest race we've had so far this year, and I'm gonna give you guys the most idiotic recap that you'll ever witness. Now the 2024 Australian Grand Prix is not that far different from the historical historical reenactment group. Matter of fact, I'd actually call it the Spanish colonization of Australia. You'll see why eventually. But for those of you thinking, Rick, why is this video longer than the official F1 race highlights? Well, not only is this video like five times better, but I'll be covering free practice, qualifying, race, post-race, and make a final verdict for it, which can range from hell yeah, this race was awesome, to I fell asleep. With all of these things covered, this could save you 10 minutes of your life, which is the equivalent to 10 Dutch national anthems. So all I can say, is you're welcome. Now let's jump back in time to Friday. Free practice is underway and everyone is praying that Max Verstappen does not make Australia boring like he did with Saudi Arabia. Anyways, the session was going fine. Just the usual practice sessions we get in Formula One where the majority of fans are delusional that their favorite driver is gonna win. Daniel Ricciardo smiles not knowing the atrocious weekend that he's about to have. Everyone forgets what track limits are. Mercedes fans wanna start crying. As for Aston Martin and Alonso fans, We've been crying since Bahrain. But amazing news was when Carlos Sainz finally got back on track after looking like this two weeks ago and a bear had to replace him. But then he drove in practice as if he never left. Then Charles Leclerc foreshadows George Russell's race result. George Russell then foreshadows it again by himself. Lance Stroll nearly hits a bird. Team LH still think Lewis has a chance to win after getting P18 in practice and everyone impedes each other. Yeah, get out of the way. What is he doing? Look at this. My god. Guys, I always find Lewis has points in the track. There's one thing that is certain is that you get an Aston Martin at one point in the middle. In all the time. Now this, I believe, shows the problem with society. You can give human beings the fastest cars in the world and there would still be traffic. Which is why I think that everyone should have Elon Musk's Neuralink brain chips installed into their heads. Not just to combat traffic, but also so I can blow up the one that's inside of Lance Stroll's head. But anyways, free practice was relatively normal and everyone expected nothing more. Until A. Williams decided to make love to the barriers at turn six, which pretty much had me reacting like this. Oh my God, Logan. Logan, no. Oh my, why? Why? Not again, Logan. How do you expect to spread freedom and democracy if you keep crashing like this? Oh my God, man. Oh wait, that was Alvin? Oh. Yeah, sorry about that, Logan. It's just, you know, uh, force a habit. So after Alex Albin sent his Williams flying into the wall, crashing at turn six, which is the same corner that he crashed at last year, his car is now a cripple and everyone at Williams panics as they probably won't be able to get the car repaired on time for qualifying or the race. Which leads them to pull off one of the fairest decisions in Formula One history and gave Logan's car to Albin. Absolutely brilliant stuff, Williams. Giving the car to the driver which crashed there last year in the same corner that he just did a couple minutes ago. Now, right after this controversial decision Williams made where they rejected freedom and democracy, James Vowell says to the press that the decision to give the car to Albin was the hardest decision he's ever had to make. Now this, this was a nicer way of saying you, Logan, you can't drive for But then again, I understand James's point of view. Alex is the better driver and not only is Logan a ticking time bomb on track, not as much as George though, but James knows that the Williams car can't handle the sheer freedom 
and democracy that Logan has coursing through his veins. Like he just knows that Logan is gonna start shooting up the drivers in front of him the moment he gets overtaken. But jokes aside though, I thought that this decision was not fair at all to Logan. Like I get it from a performance perspective, but Alex crashed his car, so it's his consequence to not be able to race. Like the disrespect is also crazy. If I was Logan, I would probably have bottled my car too so that no one gets to race. But what surprised me about his decision the most is that no one saw it coming. I mean, come on guys. This is James Vowles we're talking about. You guys know his track record of dealing with second drivers. With Max Verstappen. But I don't know why Mercedes are really doing this. He's... Valtteri, it's James. Please abort the fastest lap attempt for the end of the lap. But aside from F1's off-track drama, which is more entertaining than whatever happens on track nowadays, we now head to Saturday's qualifying, where I had more entertainment looking at my wall instead of the actual session. But from what I can remember, Charles Leclerc abandons his lap, asks for Alonso, um, let, let's, let's not talk about Alonso, guys. This has not been a good weekend for him. But anyways, Lewis Hamilton gets knocked the f*** out of P10, leaving Ferrari starting to regret the decisions they've made for 2025. Daniel Ricciardo finally realizes that he's having a weekend and the entire world is against him. Carlos Sainz is in the front row after removing his appendix, which I actually believe made him faster by at least two tenths. And finally, let's not forget the usual. Results of qualifying Max Verstappen for his third pole position out of three. Carlos Sainz in second on the front row, and Sergio Perez completing the top three. But now we're here, ladies and gentlemen. It is race day. Everyone is excited. The atmosphere is lively, and everyone cannot wait to see cars racing on track and for Max Verstappen to win by like 45 seconds. I personally was still sleeping during this time because I still didn't manage to hear my alarm after it repeated like five times. Like, I am not even making this up. This is what my alarm sounds like, and I still managed to sleep through it. But as soon as I woke up, I got on my computer, went to an F1 stream, and all I can say is holy and this is a recap of everything that happened. Max Verstappen was on fire, quite literally, and dies, which had me reacting like this. Oh my god, oh my god, Max, oh, Max is dead. Oh, he dead, man, he dead as hell. Carlos then takes the lead and invades all of Australia. Fernando Alonso tries to make a tractor go fast, but fails miserably because the car is utterly sh That driving an actual tractor would be faster. Yuki Tsunoda doesn't get anger issues this time and drives wonderfully. Alex Albin didn't even get a point after getting Logan's car as his birthday present. Kevin Magnussen remembers that he can actually drive. Daniel Ricciardo got edged from a point. Sauber broke Ferrari's record, not for most wins, but for the slowest pit stop the world has ever seen, which means two Australian drivers now have race results. And finally, George Russell tells everyone his type in women. Red flag, red flag, red flag. Well guys, I know a lot of you must be wondering, Rick, what the f*** just happened? And well, to be honest, I don't know either. This race was one hell of a roller coaster, so I'll break it down in the stupidest way possible. So basically, as soon as the lights went out, Max Verstappen had a weird tingling feeling in his butt, which made him fumble turn three. Max Verstappen then went to retire in the next laps, giving Ferrari a huge chance, which has led many fans to believe that Ferrari might have a chance to win this year. <laughs> oh, Ferrari having a chance. What am I, living in a dream? Jokes aside though, Ferrari is the strongest team to challenge Red Bull and might do well unless they decide to reenact 2022 all over again. Now right after Max's Red Bull decided that it wanted to take a sh Lewis Hamilton decides to retire as well because of an engine problem. Obviously, a lot of Mercedes fans were heartbroken, but not as much as Team LH, who are likely calling Mercedes engines white supremacists the moment Lewis got out of the car. Now as F1 started to be 2021 all over again, Lance Stroll was busy doing something else. Now I know a lot of you guys are thinking, oh my god Rick, what the hell did Lance Stroll do this time? Now surprisingly, to my surprise and yours too, Lance actually didn't do anything bad in this race. He was actually decent for once. Instead of crashing and going off in every turn, Lance Stroll did the unthinkable. This man was not just driving, but he was also edging. <laughs> 
Uh, Stroll is edging, 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 trying to get ahead. So while Lance Stroll was getting close to busting a fat one, Kevin Magnussen and Alex Albon had the edge battle as they fight for whoever can score one point for the team. Sauber did a 30 second pit stop which screws over Valtteri Bottas' race and like I said, leaving two Australians with a crappy race result. And why is Valtteri Bottas Australian? Well, I mean, just take a look at this clip. BRS, Buck Reduction System. And finally, as we enter the closing stages of the race, it's finally it. Carlos Sainz has demonstrated an amazing drive. Ferrari finishes with a 1-2. McLaren with a 3-4. Yuki Tsunoda is in the points. Haas as well. Aston's did okay. And you might think that it's finally time to celebrate. And that is the case for a lot of people, except if you're a Mercedes fan. That is right, ladies and gentlemen, George Russell has f***ed it into the wall and clarifies to the whole world that he goes by the names Osama Bin Russell and George Fumble. An amazing display of dedication to his craft, which is crashing in the last lap. George Russell is so consistent that not only did he crash at the last lap twice, but in both of those times, Carlos Sainz wins the Grand Prix, Lando is on the podium, and Crofty says, you can hear the cheers of the crowd. You can hear the cheers of the crowd here. Over to, oh no, it goes off the Mercedes and into the barrier goes George Russell. Here is Carlos Sainz that you can hear the cheers of the crowd. 3.3 miles to go and oh, George Russell. All right, so with that DNF, Haas gets a double points finish. Everyone goes back safely and we can now be satisfied that the race is over. However, the FIA realized that they haven't over someone's race result yet. So they decided to launch an investigation on George Russell's crash and gave Fernando Alonso a 20 second penalty. The biggest joke of a decision that I've ever seen my entire life. The FIA's penalty system is also just straight up broken. A couple years ago, you could fling someone to meet Jesus, crash into the car behind you, and you only get 10 seconds. And then all of a sudden, this year, Kevin Magnussen goes off track slightly, and he gets the same penalty. It is absolutely stupid that these incidents are treated as dramatic equals. For this race, Fernando didn't even touch George, and only lifted pretty early into the corner. But obviously, you know, I'm not gonna act like Fernando didn't know what he was doing. I mean, like, he operates in gray areas all the time, so what he did was to really just play mind games with Russell. But then again, if that crash didn't happen, I highly doubt Fernando would have gotten a penalty for it, let alone one that is 20 seconds. Likely because the stewards knew that a 10 second penalty would not have changed Fernando's race result. Now, of course, guys, what is my final verdict for this race? Well, even with Max exploding, Lance Stroll edging, Lewis Hamilton parking, George Russell doing a side plank with his car, Ferrari getting an awesome one-two, Haas scoring double points, I've got to say that this race was still pretty boring. It didn't feel any different from Saudi Arabia and Bahrain apart from the mechanical failures and just more DNFs. I would say that this race would probably be way more entertaining if Max didn't disqualify, as he and Carlos would have had an amazing battle. So I would give this race overall a DNF out of 10 with an extra George fumble on top. Also guys, for what I expect this season, Fernando Alonso at least one win this year. God bless. If he doesn't get it, then f*** my life. Red Bull and Ferrari have a very interesting title fight, but of course, please don't forget Logan Sargent world champion this year. All right, Logan Sargent 2024 world champion. You got that FIA? If I... Hello ladies and gentlemen, today I'm here to honor my bet that I made, which failed, where I said Max Verstappen was going to win all races in 2024, and immediately after I said that, he lost in Australia. So today I'm about to honor that bet by chopping my balls off. That's the bet I made. There we have it, ladies and gentlemen. I am in severe pain right now.